Hi everyone, this is Jeff. I want to take a little bit of time to show some of the things I show in class and maybe go a little bit deeper with uh, Postman. Postman being a, a very adequate um, kind of universal client for APIs, testing especially HTTP-based APIs. So the ability to make GET requests, POST requests, DELETE requests, etc. Um, I'm going to also show you uh, most of that I show how to do in the class, I'm manually constructing requests, so I won't go over a lot of that now, but I'm going to show you a couple handy features. One of them is the ability to um, import an open API specification, um, aka a Swagger document, into um, Postman and use that to um, kind of get a sense of what's available in an API. Many times we're using Postman as we construct an API, but I know as someone who writes um, clients to APIs, sometimes the API already exists and I want to use a tool other than just writing the code for my client to investigate the API, try some things out, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then we'll take a quick look at writing automated tests using Postman. Um, these would be... Um, integration tests that go a little bit further than uh, what I show in class. In class, we just test from the service boundary. In other words, making an HTTP request into our API up to, but not including the other services that might be part of our microservice architecture. So when we write those tests with C Sharp and X unit and the web host factory, all that kind of stuff, we fake out all those kind of things. So this would be testing from the HTTP service boundary, creating an HTTP request, making it against the API where the API uses the databases, any other backend services, message queues, et cetera, and then inspecting the responses that come back. So we'll jump, uh, jump into the code here and uh, take a look at what we have. So <clears throat> uh, just from the last time I, I taught backend services 100, this is a generated, um, uh, Swagger UI reading in our open API specification. We have a an API. This is running on localhost. We have an API. Maybe I'll just focus in on the books resource here. Um, we can update the genre. We can remove a book. We can get a book by ID. We can add a book. Um, we can do a get on a book. So Swagger Documents um, and Swagger UI makes a good kind of preliminary test tool for us where we can go in and say, okay, there's no parameters required here. I should expect back 200. JSON format, here's an example of what I might get back. And I can even try it out. If I hit the try it out button and hit execute, it runs it against the server and shows me that yes, I did get a 200 response back. The data I got back looks like this. It's an object with a data property with an array of two different books. Um, book two here by my favorite author, Flamboyant Loveless. I'm not sure where that came from, et cetera, et cetera. Now, <clears throat> as we discussed in class, this is Swagger UI, which is an HTML5 application that wraps up um, and provides a good user interface upon, uh, uh, upon an open API specification file, a Swagger document. If you look here, I mean, I'll just open this in another tab. This is actually the generated Swagger document. So I'm going to take that URL. And if I switch over to Postman here, um, one of the things you can do is import that. So if I click the import button at the top, um, you can do open API, graph URL, et cetera. I'm going to do, I'm going to do it from a link. Uh, and if you do it from a link here, just paste in that URL, hit continue. Um, and it says, uh, yeah, it's going to import this as a collection um, because I'm not connected. I haven't signed in. Uh, gives it a name, what the format is, et cetera, under advanced settings. There's a couple things you can do here. You can set, you know, some formatting things, things like that, but I'm just going to take it as it is. And when I import that in, it comes in as a collection. So now under the collections tab, you'll see I have this little folder. I can expand it out. It shows me all the resources for this particular API, just like we saw in the Swagger document. Here's books. I can do a get request on books. I can do a post to books. I can get um, a book by ID, etc. So if I replicate what we did in that Swagger document and hit get, 
Um, the first thing you'll see at the top here is it has this base URL. If I try to send this at this point, um, it can't find that there's no value for the base URL here. That is a variable and um, we can change that in our environment. So at the top, we have this little drop down for environments. We don't currently have any up here, but if I do uh, an environment quick look, I can add an environment and maybe I'll call this books. And then for those URLs, I'm gonna say, or for that URL, base URL, I'll give it an initial value, which is the URL of where my API is hosted, which is just at localhost. Um, and it will fill out the current value for us when we do that. So hit add on this, and then I'm kind of done. I can close out of this and under environments i'll set books and now when i send it it will plug in that url as my base url um, we could also you know if i do a get request on books by id here um, so we can delete by id we can do a put based on an id to update a title but i'll do a get based on id um, it has a, a path variable set up right so book colon ID and that refers to this path variable here so if I put in a value and hit send I get that response back if I put in a value that doesn't exist I get a 404 back <clears throat> and then finally for posts this is helpful I think that'll be enough if I show this if I do posts here um, it sets up in the body a little example and it knows I have to post JSON so it added the accept or I'm sorry the content type header for application JSON and a little template for us to fill out to provide those values so we could call this postman is rad the genre could be tech and oh that was the author um, I'll, they put put them in alphabetical order so I'll change that postman is rad and maybe this is by Joe Schmidt he writes a lot of books and I send that request I get the response back looks like that right so again having environments with our URLs which means you could also create different environments if you had a different environment for dev or QA or test or what have you um, and uh, using the pre-built templates for these things um, can be pretty darn handy so when you use these these all get added to your history as well so you can always go back and revisit them um, but the collections are all based on that Swagger document. If the Swagger document evolves over time, you'll have to import it in again. You can remove this collection or just add in a new version if it's a, a new version of the API as opposed to something that just extends it. But pretty darn handy, I think. Um, and you can have many collections. So if you have other Swagger documents you want to have, you can have them all listed here. You can see there's a little um, button here to get more information about it. Um, you can hit this one and share it, create it. Um, and there's some other tools for like mocking these things out for client sides or client side application development um, where we don't want to be connected to that. That can be really helpful if you're using a third party API and perhaps the performance of it isn't the greatest. Um, or uh, it actually charges you for API calls or you have some kind of limit, you can mock these things out. I'm not gonna show how to do that in this video, but perhaps in another one in the future. Um, and this is where you would remove it. Good. Okay, as a real quick, um, just super quick introduction to um, writing tests for this. And when I do a get request, I have this, I like to make the request first. And you can see I got a 200 status code and if I look at the body, um, it says I got a response back. So that might be something that I write a test for, that I get 200 back. Um, maybe the ID property is one, et cetera, et cetera. So up at the top, now one thing you have to be signed in to Postman. You can get a free account. Um, it's up in the top right hand corner to sign in. It doesn't let you, let you write tests unless you do this, but here's tests. And um, very helpfully, they have a whole bunch of little snippets you can do, you can start with on this side. These tests are written in JavaScript. Um, so 
pretty straightforward, but you can see there's get an environment variable, get a global variable. I'm gonna do this one, check to see if the status code is 200. And it kind of just brings that in. So postman, uh, the PM variable is a global object. That's the postman test. And this one is named status code is 200. Eh, hard to improve on that. Then it has a little callback function that will be run when the request is completed. And here it's just checking, has its own little testing domain specific language, just testing it. The response has a status of 200. So now when I execute this, it will show in the test results that this test passed. If I change this to something else, uh, maybe I want to see if I get a 404 here and send that right that failed because i got a 200 so pretty straightforward there i'm going to go back get my green on this test and um, if i look at the body there it is again so maybe i'd also want to you can add multiple tests for this request here i might also want to see if it uh, contains a body if J the json contains a body so if you click that i might say here response ID is correct. So it's going to, um, the basic test runner um, works with JSON responses and it has a little utility method on the response object here that will convert that JSON data into a JavaScript object. So this little expect the JSON data value to equal 100, I'm gonna say ID and this one, since we're running it against person one, is one. And if I send that and look at my test results, I get the two passing tests now. Feels good. If I wanted to also check, maybe I felt pretty confident on the data itself, like I, the genre was the right value. I'm just going to copy and paste this test and maybe take this maybe update this a little bit call that a const and then i don't need to read the data again and the genre is equal to tech so send that i now have three of three responses Pretty nifty. So you can write these tests for each request. Um, it's just a great way to kind of automate what we do manually, which is go through and use Postman to make sure our API is doing what we want to do, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully that gives you a good sense of at least opens the door to a few things you can do with Postman. The Postman documentation is really helpful for this. There's lots of videos. Um, one thing you can do is if you go through, um, in, in terms of testing, if you go through on that collection and um, set up tests for each of the resources in your collection, you can export that collection to a file. And then there's a node package called Newman, just npm install minus g Newman, N-E-W-M-A-N. And you can run those from a command prompt. So you could add them to, um, you know, your CI CD setup or something like that to run the tests before they execute. I don't want to go through all that in this short video because I want these to be short, pithy, and just help you get started and give you enough information where you can Google the rest. So I hope this was helpful. Thanks.